So let's put this all together. What have we done in this unit? We started with price equals expected discounted payoff. And we, we rearranged that with a few lines of algebra in lots and lots of interesting ways. We talked about returns in both discrete and continuous time. We re-expressed price equals expected discounted payoff into statements about expected returns, covariances, and betas. And we derived the, the look of the famous beta models that are throughout finance. We got the famous theorems that covariance matters for risk. Only systematic risk is priced by looking at that. We found the mean variance frontier. It exists and is expressed by the role theorem. Returns on the mean variance frontier carry all pricing information, even when nobody wants to hold a return on the mean variance frontier. We talked about random walks and martingales and market efficiency um, and the time series behavior of returns. And we also learned about the, the possibility of slow time varying expected returns. And we closed up with thinking about general equilibrium, how prices expected discounted payoff is really a demand curve that needs to be merged with a supply curve uh, if you want a, a true picture of what's exogenous, what's endogenous, and what causes what. Those are really the topics of the entire course. Most of the to-do list is to go back and look at each of these items in much more detail and understand them more carefully. Uh, along the way, we're going to also look at more asset pricing models. We saw one where we substitute a discount factor is function of consumption growth via power utility function. But that one, it turns out, doesn't work very well in practice. And our goal is to find models that work well in practice. So we'll abandon a lot of theoretical purity, and we'll think about other ways of connecting discount factors to data that are useful for specific applications. The capital asset pricing model connects the discount factor to the market return. The Fama French model connects the discount factor to the return on larger sets of portfolios. We'll do lots of models that, that connect the discount factor not to true macroeconomic quantities, but to other prices. So option pricing and bond pricing models, pricing by arbitrage, you find very useful models, though not that pure models, from learning about the discount factor for one set of assets by finding discount factors that price other sets of assets. And that's very useful, not so much when you want to have lunchroom discussions about rationality and exogeneity, but very useful when you have a set of prices and you want to learn how to price a bunch of other things. We'll survey the facts and how the theories, uh, once we develop them, account for the facts and don't. And of course, we'll talk about portfolio theory. Uh, what does all this theory, in fact, imply for how, in the modern world, one should form a portfolio of assets? That's the to-do list, but really it is go back through everything we surveyed today and look at it in more detail, more carefully. And I hope this, this preview made it exciting to go back and look at each of those items. Thank you.